Hey guys, how are you? Welcome. It's the Market Sniper here coming at you. Um, an interesting uh, report in gold we trust. Uh, German, I think by initial extraction, but also available in uh, English. Pop over to their website, support these guys in goldwetrust.report stroke IGWT. Um, maybe I'll include that in the notes below. Um, but you can download the extended, the, the compact report and also pretty interesting to me as the chart guy, technical analysis, looking at the key things. I think a picture can say all you really need to uh, hear when it comes to these aspects. Um, so I'm going to run you through a couple of key charts on the chart book here. I've also got the pandemic or let me rather say the Pandora's box that is um, central banks digital currencies in these pandemic times i think it's particularly interesting um that pandora's box that may possibly be opened um coming very soon as we hear from our chief controllers at the world economic forum that says you will own nothing and be on a perpetual state of happiness and bliss as an assetless surf uh, on your happy pills can't wait for that whole new communistic pharmaceutical, big tech tracing, com super compliant society. Can you? Anyway, let's go to gold uh, and the report that we have here. Um, so a couple of things, first of all, about the dollar that jumped out at me and working my way through uh, the report. Uh, no friend of Mr. J.C. Juncker of the ECB, but an interesting point that is worthy of making is that it's absurd that Europe pays 80% of its import bill that's energy um, worth 300 billion euro a year in US dollars when only roughly 2% of that energy is actually supplied by America. So the bulk of the energy is supplied probably by Russia um, and the Urals and other parts of the world. And they are forced to buy dollars and pay in dollars because dollar is the hegemony. People are starting to use the phrase dollar emancipation. It's almost the escape of the great slavery of the dollar. Remember, we've had Carney whispering in Powell's ear before he stepped down, both on central bank digital currencies and the edge end of the edge of the cliff, I suppose, for the US dollar, the end of its hegemony. Um, and now people are using emancipation from the dollar. In, in other words, um, I will soon be able to have conversations with uh, Americans uh, maybe even some African Americans and declare my emancipation and my and the fact that I will be seeking reparations for the financial slavery the dollar hegemony has instilled on me and that they should come up with proposals for compensating me financially for their ill-gotten gains and their dollar-based privilege. I'm looking forward to that conversation. Um, I'm looking, uh, maybe I should start with 50 cent or somebody like that. He sounds like he's got some money. Um, and who knows, you know, uh, who knows what could be? I could, uh, I could, I could get dollar privilege trending maybe. Anyway, I'll need a few more million subs for that, by the way. Hit the sub for the channel. You want to see me go to all our, uh, what's that? LeBron James. I think he owes me for his dollar based privilege that he's been asserting over me, the wealth that he's been allowed to accrue. Never mind that athletic, but um, I am due funds. Uh, hit the likes and the subs so that you can see me making my claim and seeking my restitution from my emancipation. Let's get the phraseology right. Anyway, enough excitement about all of my uh, grandstanding. Let's have a look at uh, this report and also, more importantly, the chart book that I'm going to show you. Charts say a whole bunch. I love seeing the image. It tells you the story. What's the money doing, not what they're saying. And I'm always suggesting that. The dawning of a gold decade. So credit to the people that are the originators of my report. It's not my material. Ronald Peter Sturfehler. I think that's very Germanic. Mark J. Valak, September 2020, available in German from their websites and of course in English too. Go and uh, get a download, reg for their free newsletter, do whatever you like. Newsletter, sublink, support people that are putting out good research and making it freely available. So um, giving them a legs up there and I think fair play to them. So the dawning of a gold decade. So it's bulletproof. Number one, monetary policy normalization has failed. There is no monetary policy. It is all zero or near zero. 
and we may even go a little lower than zero. Who knows? Um, but it's certainly all zero rise. Nobody's going back to five to six percent. How did that Fed normalization of interest rates and balance sheet turn out? Exactly like we told you, a major ask about face. And boy, have I got a chart just to illustrate that moment coming up in a minute. Coronavirus pandemic scamdemic is the accelerant of the overdue recession. There is there was always going to be a major depression. Yield curves have inverted, guys, long before the scam got played. They know that. They know that the yield curves were inverting. They know all these things. So they brought on the concurrent event health pharmaceutical, all of which are part of the macro agenda. But anyway, let's not go down too many reset sniper rabbit holes. Don't forget to sub on that channel uh, for updates there. It's getting dark and interesting. Um, trend setting monetary and geopolitical upheavals are to be expected and already executed by the Federal Reserve. Relaxing the inflation target. Basically, that means they're going to go printathon maximus. Maximus printus, pass me another ink cartridge, please, sir. Um, supporting a medium term inflationary environment, medium term, medium too long <laughs> until bust. That's how it's going to play. Uh, in fact, there's already inflation. And this is what I keep making on our crypto sniper. Sub the crypto sniper. We'll be back. We highlighted that Bitcoin as restricted by 21 million is breaking down. In other words, up against when divided uh, when the Nasdaq and when gold is divided by Bitcoin, both those charts are breaking down. So Bitcoin is a hyper performer. But the reason why we're talking about gold today is my assessment is you need both. There's certain things about Bitcoin that make it uh, have a certain risk profile as well, being entirely electronic, etc. Benefits and downsides. So you want to have a mix in your reset sniper currencies. Don't forget to book a call. We are here. We're working on timing. We're working on the technical analysis. The sole goal of this community since it was started and this YouTube channel in 2009 is to build wealth in reset sniper time. The great reset was my phrase. The, the computer power off button was my logo, damn it. And all these bastards came and squatted on me. OK, so that's what's happening. The status quo of gold. Gold's proved pretty prof profitable. It's actually had a great 2020 so far. Silver even more so. We'll touch a little bit on that. Um, a minor uh, correction. We'll talk more technically. These guys are not uh, HBF methods, hunt volatility funnel method traders. So we'll cover that side of the thing. Silver has a great uh, lining and it's starting to overperform gold, which is good for both. Although it's also having the rest. Uh, and mining stocks, it's only just beginning for mining stocks, in my view. Um, and then a little bit of Latin. Who knows? Uh, I should have checked that before I came on. Quo Vardis Aurum. What does that mean? Our proprietary model shows that a gold price of four and a half uh, for eight at the end of the decade, even with conservative calibration and a gold price of approaching nine grand in an inflationary environment. How will you do? in the event gold is doing that. And yes, it's not exactly um, Bitcoin moon spike, but that is still over the course of a decade on the inflationary argument, which I would say we're far deeper in than most people realize. Ergo, the overvaluation of the entire stock market, uh, particularly the tech and biotech uh, companies. Uh, Zoom last time we heard was around 90 times. I keep mentioning that it is perverse. 90 times sales. OK, there's no one who gets paid a salary. There's no tax bills to pay or be paid. There's no office rent to be paid. 90 years to get your money back. Think about that for a minute. OK, uh, for essentially a go to meeting um, online, go to meeting game. So let's get straight into the charts because that's what I'm all about and that's what we love. Uh, and I've got my own very special, ta -da 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 -da. Um, I don't know why I did that. Um, let's have a little look and let's go straight into it. So here, the blue is the Fed. So blue is Fed. One of the biggest contributors. The red line is the generally all the major central banks. Being below the line means they were tapering and reducing. So instead of being the red, instead of going across there like that, it's because the ECB was, in fact, reducing during that time, as you can see there. So it's netted off. It's not exactly to scale because uh, the scale is kind of uh, negative here and they've had to squeeze it in. So it's slightly diagrammatic. Um, so that's the Fed. Bank of Japan is gold. 
ECB, as I've already touched on, is the off green, and then the total is the, the big number. So here you have it. Oh, and this is the S&P, by the way, in the blue line, lest we forget asset price inflation on the great index of stonks, stinky stonks, uh, as I like to call them, stinky stonks. I better, I, better, geez, I better trademark that because they'll start talking about it like that as well. I can't wait for the WF. I think I need to start... Uh, uh, start some law cases. Anyway, S and P five hundred. Da 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 da. Uh, this was your great attempt at taper by the American Fed. Da 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 da. -da. We are reducing balance sheet. Well, how did that go versus all the increases in balance sheets that you've done lately? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, not so big, took a hell of a long time, started there, never got really very high, and how's the rebound? Whoopa! There you go. Okay, so that was not, uh, in my view, a great success, uh, particularly. Uh, in fact, they were back printing far faster, far harder, in far shorter time, far higher, uh, and it's only going to get worse. So that's your red line. That is a moon shoot. That is truly a moon shoot. And you can all blame it on COVID-19. Don't worry. When we're done with 19, there'll be COVID-21, <laughs> COVID-33, as many COVIDs as we need. It's the new war on terror. Yes. Okay. So let's have a little look at the, the other chart. So what does this mean? What does it mean to you? About just getting serious for half a second, um, central bank flows are going absolutely Dulali, ridiculous. This is hyperinflationary behavior. You're already seeing a bit of hyperinflation in the assets. You're not seeing too much hyperinflation in certain areas where there's been a, a, a marked reduction in spending. Um, so in some spots, there's almost deflationary elements like travel, um, going on uh, cruises, etc., etc. But that's got a lot to do um, with the scandemic. Okay, uh, ta -da. so that's a great chart and it makes its point. Let's have a look at that Federal Reserve. It's such a big player. And let's have a look at that monetary policy story. Effective fund rates. Well, guess what? They want to try stay above zero, but they're effectively zero, but for a hair's whisker. And how's uh, that climb in assets? Well, when you had normal rates way back then, approaching almost 7%. Can you believe that? Uh, no, it was five and a half. I'm looking at the wrong scale. There you go. So dyslexic of me. Um, around about five and a half. That's what I remember. Uh, and then you had a Fed balance sheet of that. Then you had your sweet as pie, uh, great financial crisis. And of course, there was a staircase up. Uh, and since then, they were adding all the time. At a ever escalating and then QE almost for infinity. Then they did the great shortening of rates. Guess how far they got? You guessed it, 2.5. And then there was the quickest of all reversals way back down to near zero where they were. Uh, and that's how far they got with taper. There's your balance sheet taper. And how does it look now? There. <laughs> so everything they tapered, times by about three or four, all added back on. And where you're on the rates, back where you were. Okay, that was a great little uh, proof of point. We said it wouldn't happen. We said they can't go back. You can't have normal interest rates. That caused the dollar to be alarmingly strong. Now we're getting a little bit of a recoil effect where you, there's no reason to own dollar at the moment. The rates are absolutely atrocious. And there's going to be a whole bunch more printed shortly. Okay, so that's the dollar. Why be in the dollar? Why be in any fiat for that matter? But we'll get into that uh, in more. So some of you might not know um, the full meaning of um, the various measures of supply of monetary um, tools or the entire monetary base. So there's M0, 1, 2, 3, and there's even an MB in between. So rather than me yak away, uh, I'll just put this little short snippet educational on and you can get exactly what the money supply is. Supply or money stock refers to the total amount of currency and other liquid financial products in an economy at a particular time. There are several measures of money supply depending on what's included. M0, the narrowest definition of money supply, includes only hard currency in circulation. MB includes M0 plus hard currency held in bank reserves, which is not technically in circulation. M1, a common measure of money supply, includes hard currency 
currency in circulation, M0, plus checking accounts and certain other checkable deposits. Checking accounts are technically out of circulation, but the owner can retrieve them from the bank upon demand. M2 includes all of M1, plus savings deposits and CDs. Savings deposits and CDs are slightly less liquid than checking accounts, but can still be converted to cash quickly. And I'll stop there, sh shy of M3. Um, good little vid uh, for everybody. Essentially, money in circulation fiat notes is your M0. And then uh, the others are savings and CDs up to M2. So let's have a look at that chart again now that it might mean a little bit more to all of us. Um, so there's your notes, coinage, etc. Physical money that is hard available in circulation. Um, this is with your savings instruments, checking accounts and slightly less liquid long term savings. So CDs, etc. Um, so when you subtract the, the current supply of coinage from the electronic money, um, you get the blue line. Both are growing immensely. Both are growing immensely. You'll note that the MO had to expand after this little period over here. You'll see it took a slight dive on um, M2 minus MO. You then had a very strong expansion um, of coin proliferation. And this went largely flat relative because of that expansion. But you're actually expanding as a whole. But a large part of that expansion came through uh, coinage. Then you've actually seen less come out and you've seen in actual fact that you've continued to grow so the blue line really is the money line and we are also currently ramping again um, the circulation although we are just having a little uh, pullback right now it's funny how asset prices very closely resemble this chart very very interesting um, so us percentage um, of M2, which is the more realistic measure because it's not just cash notes. It's got uh, the electronic money in uh, banks, banks with reserves, which is also often money that doesn't get engaged in the market. Look at that spike uh, in modern history. We've not seen a growth like that year on year. So they tell you central banks are, to, are here to manage the economy. All they do is increase the volatility. Economies were far more stable before central banking cartel of uh, insiders got their hands on the teller. Velocity, of course, falls. So that means the exchange rate. So if a large amount of that is sitting in asset reserves that are sitting in a bank and not being utilized, actually, they're not spending at all. So it's the amount of energy money has is its value and denomination, how much of it, and then almost how much spinning it is doing around the wheel of active transactions. And of course, the more they're putting in reserves, the bigger the amount there is. But in actual fact, it's not engaged. Um, global negative yielding debt. So guess what? All the big fallacies, including Mr. Buffet. Buffet, I like to think of him as Buffet, the smorgasbord. Uh, Buffett himself said gold is something you dig out of a hole in the ground somewhere and put in a hole somewhere else and then have to pay people to guard it uh, and it pays you no rent or no interest. Well, I would argue compared to government bonds, which now cost you to own and pay negative interest, that's something that isn't that is holding value and is not chipping you every week or month. When you put it under your floorboards, it'll still 100% all be there. It won't have been diminished on the back end of some sneaky negative compound interest equation over 10, 15 years. No, sir, it'll still be there. That, in fact, his very argument is supporting holding gold. And, of course, he bought Barrick recently and dumped banks. Ah, oh, isn't that interesting? He's hardly early mover. We've been calling short on banks since the 08, uh, 09 crisis to the point that we've almost bored of it. We've stopped uh, mentioning that. And of course, the gold bull, which he said was pointless. And now he's undoing federal debt as a percentage of GDP. Let's have a look at that um, current course. Well, in March, they forecast 98. And now that just did a major up leg forecast one month later. One month later, the same people now forecasting through to 21. And they've actually gone a whole bunch higher. Wow. Um, they also how they get to the fact that we'll be at 2021 at 108, but that in the same time a month earlier that we'll be back down at 98 by the time it's 30. Uh, I'm afraid they are seeing a whole bunch of GDP coming online and a whole reduction of debt that I just ain't seeing. 
But anyway, that's them. It always gets better in the future. Um, you know, forecast out long enough and nobody cares whether you are right or wrong. No one's going back 20 years to check what you said. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Um, so if they're forecasting um, 108, you can only just ima imagine. Never mind uh, the unfunded, not kept on balance sheet aspects in the US, such as welfare, Medicaid and all the other liabilities um, from state pensions, etc., etc. Um, did the everything bubble burst? Uh, I'm not sure that's significant enough to call it a proper releasing of the everything bubble. Um, dot com bubble sure burst and then got reinflated uh, before it was probably allowed to clean up everything in the same way the housing bubble wasn't allowed to clean up everything. Note how the increase of volatility has come. Bigger moves up, bigger swings down. Wow. Financial assets of households, disposable personal income, 1970 to quarter two of this year. And currently, guess what? Everybody's personal income um, is not doing so great. Not doing so great, but the financial assets can indeed climb ever higher. This was an interesting Dow Gold ratio. This start chart I've seen and is regularly put in front of me. Um, and this is kind of incredible data because it's got the 1800 here. Uh, for rarely do you get data of such a level um, and gold gold low to stocks. This is the isn't it interesting? The beginning of the Federal Reserve suddenly sees gold suddenly hits an all time low and stocks an all time high. Didn't take the Federal Reserve very long to have created a mega pump and dump scheme. If anyone thinks central banks bring stability, I just put you in front of the single chart alone. 1913. I went to Jekyll Island, the creature from Jekyll Island, Edward Griffin, absolute must read. Um, and that is the creation of the Fed, the families that were involved, the secrecy, all the scamminess, the sneaking around, and then the coalition, how it was formed. Gold low, stocks high. Then you get the crash, you get a gold high, stocks low. Then they pump it back up again into the 60s, big bull run into the mids. And late 60s, starting the 70s, the stagflationary era into the gold highs of early 80s. And then the financialization of everything under Greenspan. If you want one line that is Greenspan, it's that. He started in 87 around here, maybe that big dip there, and he bridged us all the way through to that. He is he is an absolute financial criminal and uh, should be taken to The Hague for his crimes against uh, humanity. We never shook out the fullness of the scam. In, and this is what I keep reiterating. We didn't get the full gold bull run in this period. So as the gold started to come down, that was a half run. 80s was a gold run. That was the beginning of a gold run in the late 30s. But I can say to you, it's also, you know, they, that's when they reset the gold and they stopped Americans from owning it. Um, this is not the fullest enchilada. And that is why I concur with this chart that there is a new low to be run. And because of the volatility they introduce, it's a new low to the low side is quite feasibly possible by the time the entire cycle is done. By the time the entire cycle is done peoples. You need to be aware of that. Uh, you could plummet to below one. That's not going to be good for your Dow Jones. Um, people won't be uh, won't be tumbling into stocks. Could be the great end of capitalism. It's already happened. Uh, your Bolsheviks are full, full, full pedal to the metal. So let's have a look at this. Commodity index from Schmoldman's shacks, the criminals that bounced Greece with into the euro when they should never have qualified with off balance sheet derivative tools and various other shenanigans only for them later to be totally bankrupted and owned by the ECB uh, and under the direct control essentially of Germany uh, and uh, Brussels diktat. So, you know, uh, pretty much pretty much a criminal organization. But anyway, it's called the Goldman Sachs uh, Commodity Index. That's it divided by the Dow Jones Industrial uh, Average and the ratio that that generates. So essentially, these key points are exceptional overvaluations of commodities. No, the 2011 high of commodities for precious metals 
didn't quite make it. And this is all commodities as well, by the, fa by the way. Don't forget, it'll include uh, a lot of uh, others that are not in included outside of precious metals. Um, this is undervalued period uh, for gold, the 30s. Then, of course, in the late 60s uh, into the early 70s, that then caused what was deemed to be a hyper valuation for commodities in the early 80s, particularly precious metals. This was other. I think this has got a very strong weighting in the energy. So we had the energies get very, very high in the 90s. Oil was the great tax um, for everybody. And uh, that was super, super big. But then oil got smashed. And it's also part of some of the reason why this is still so low. Um, but gold has already uh, certainly turned, is making new highs. But as of 2020, the overall commodity pot, as uh, broken down by the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, um, which will have all sorts of things, softs, agriculturals, um, energies and various others, uh, is still near all time lows. That is you literally my birth late 60s uh, from here. Um, you can't say OK Boomer to me. I'm afraid I'm a Gen X. I'm a Generation X like Billy Idol's band. Um, and so in fact, you have gone lower right now when you take uh, the performance of the energy sector and some of the softs. So it's pretty early in that cycle. How do you think some of these things will do if you get not only across the median line, you go all the way probably to a parabolic new extreme. You've got the globe coordinated in a debt cycle where fiats will become worthless. How do you think that commodity cycle will roll? For me, all time economic case study high. Yes, sir, the Bolsheviks are coming and the break, they're going to break the economy and they're going to create hyperinflation with their UBI, their printing and various other techniques that they intend to utilize and thereby laying to waste the financial system as we know it. Hence, making the case for gold, silver and other assets like Bitcoin, which I've already mentioned too. Um, but as I say, don't be a 100% believer in one, have a little bit of both, hedge your bets. Um, certain ones have characteristics which are more useful. Status quo of gold. Realize that everything is connected, Leonardo da Vinci. Actually, it's already been doing pretty good uh, against most uh, currencies, most years since the bottom of 2000. Look, this is optimized to make the case. 2020 was the low. Gold was awful up to 2000. It was absolutely awful. But then the, the wealth effect uh, and everything that was going uh, on and the uh, central banks net selling, etc., etc. Brown's bottom, we all know about that. Gordon Brown of the UK criminal, another one of many uh, Blair era criminals. Um, but anyway, let's go here. Average is 10% a year that you've been getting. You had a bad year in 2013 because you had such a good year in 11 uh, and the run up to 11. So you actually had 26%, 17%, 21%, 14.6%, 17.6%, 24.3%, and 7%. You can give one quarter back after doing that. Believe you me. Those were huge. And by the way, you weren't saved by any fiat. OK, the Japanese yen, you had four years where you actually didn't make money. You gave back. OK, against the Chinese yuan, four years. Where's the Swiss franc? You actually, against the Swiss franc, you had f six years. You didn't make money. And one of them was minus 0.8. Um, all the others you made money in. Six years out of 20. That's 14 up years against one of the strongest uh, currencies. Uh, dollar, one, two, three, four, five years. Um, so you can see where this is going. Average, including with the bearish uh, days, 10% per year. How's that T bill? Waza? Buffet? How's it paying you? Negative interest? That's a crying shame. Um, why not get into something that's average 10%? And uh, never to admit that we've only really just getting started. We're only really just getting started. We're having a bit of a pullback. We'll look at the live charts in a second. Gold performance in major currencies. This is just overkill. It's done really great um, recently against the yen. Um, that's gone stormed uh, ahead. 
Uh, we're talking since 2009. The, the yen did a lot of devaluation around about here in the 13, 14 period. So that put it out up front. Uh, more recently, I'd actually argue the Australian dollar has been one of the, the weakest. You've got the CAD here as an example, where it was near the low side and now near the high side. I think the Aussie would have been one of the worst uh, in terms of performance of the majors. Um, certainly the commodity gold in dollars and the world gold price. Um, so you've got the gold in USD and then you've got kind of like a Woku. Um, you can see it's even better. So the dollar has been relatively stronger for this period since the financial crisis. But hark, a weak period may come. In fact, we're not seeing much strength out of the dollar at the moment. It's been pretty damn weak. Gold bull and bear markets. That's the nature of the profile. Um, this is 71. Uh, this captured the late 70s and the 80s run. They can run long and hard. We actually had quite a lengthy one, but it didn't accelerate to its final conclusion and then got stopped pretty hard uh, there. And I think we're pretty early in this one. And I think this will be the biggest of the lot. Because let's be clear, guys, every country is now coordinated and in debt. China's been added. Australia's been added. All these countries are hopelessly over indebted. They skipped the bust of 2008 Australia. Now they'll be part, very much part of the next bust. They're teetering and ready as per the rest of the world, as per the rest of the world. This will be the first globally synchronized debt meltdown. And I would expect the largest bull market uh, ever in history in terms of what you're looking at on this scale. Um, but there could be a confiscation that inter intervenes at some point. We've got to bear that in mind. You can see recessions and depressions. There's nothing yet for gray zone over here. Well, I would argue you're already in a gray zone um, that started with uh, last year around about the repo problems. That clearly was a beginning of major financial stress. It was also the yield curve inversion. It was a whole bunch of things. All that we predicted because we gave you 330 days on this channel till the next prediction. We predicted it a year before in 2018 for the 2019. And what did you then get? You got your release of virus and you got your uh, scamdemic which then properly insured. So this is going to be a biggie and we are back into it again. Okay, gold and S&P uh, 500 ratio. So in 2012, it was kind of high. Since then, it's just been down, 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 down. This is the culture of equity over everything. And remember, this is the S&P, not the NASDAQ, the tech fuel bombed NASDAQ. No, sir. Um, so you're, that's where you're at. And you're just starting a basing out and turning up of gold versus the S&P. Uh, and I would imagine you could surpass that high. Remember, to me, 2011, watch the video where we did the Bureau of Labor Statistics and we did John Williams' shadow stats. That was a truncated bull that ended at 2011. It ended too soon. We never cleared out. We never went the whole way and cleared out. They saved the day uh, and cheated. Next time, I don't think they'll be able to stop it. Um, we'll see. Gold in local currency and domestic stock index annual performance. So what do you have? Gold in the local currency. How much is it up? And the domestic stock performance. So that's Russia. Russia's done great by owning gold and not investing in its shares. This is uh, just for 2020. So it's a little bit of a short data piece. But across the board, gold is up for the year. And generally, with a pot, the, the main exception of China, um, most of their stock markets are down. US is flat as it stands right now. This is the whole risk on risk off uh, and in uh, game in terms of nature. This is what's happening. The S&P is a bull, bull, bull. And then it's bearish on the inflation highs of the 70. Everyone then becomes a dollar uh, bull and the S&P 500 uh, comes down and the gold goes up and this ratio goes down. So these uh, red zones are the risk off zones that we are essentially in. This was such an extreme inflation that it came down really, really hard. But as I continue to repeat the value, the value of that, you almost need a log scale chart that only add volatility. Equities have gone to new highs uh, generally since the 2000 highs. Um, the Nasdaq is unbelievable and they've gone risk on and now we're turning into 
dollar bearish phase, inflation risk high, and this could be very powerful for anti-fiats generally, which will include Bitcoin as well as uh, gold and even more so for the cryptos for as long as they are surviving. So that's the US dollar index. Um, yeah, we've looked at this and we've said, wow, what's coming next? I think the dollar, this is why I refer you to that comment here. Juncker commenting like this. Um, Carney, as he stood down as Bank of England, commenting to Jay Powell and these discussions being leaked. Since when do two central bankers having a, a private powwow actually have the content of that discussion made public? The only time they do it is for forewarning and signaling of intent so that no one can say we weren't listening. We didn't know if you're listening and you're paying attention. It's coming. That's simply that, guys. It's simply that. Um, so let's go through the rest of these charts fairly promptly. A lot of it's just different representations of the same data. Gold in USD and uh, gold S&P ratio. Um, this is log scaled. So what they're showing is uh, in the gold, gold alone, the red areas. And in the blue areas against the S&P ratio, you can see we're quite low against the S&P at the moment. They've put on an MA. I don't like MAs generally. I don't think it's very good. Look at all these false signals you get. I think they're pretty pointless. You Once you've reached a certain stage as a technical analyst, you shouldn't need a smoothed out version of the price and they're not tradable um, successfully long term. Uh, you need idealized cycles for that. But uh, what they will be suggesting is the break of the MA. Um, to the upside is the beginning of a new red zone era. It should be in green for gold going up, but nonetheless, we understand what they're trying to illustrate there. Um, rallies during the Great Recession. So what they're highlighting is that the index often has some of its strongest moments whilst actually selling off because they snap back rallies. And they're highlighting the number of times that in 1929 through to the 30s, you got bounces that were false norms. And that is a real ball breaker, if you'll excuse the phrase, uh, but you go, no, no, this time, no, no, this time. It's like running that marathon in the crest of the hill and it never quite comes. You get to that point and you see it's still climbing further and there's a new crest and then it's still climbing and the legs are going. The burn is kicking. Yep. Uh, some runners will know exactly what I'm referring to there. Uh, gold inflation um, adjusted in USD as well. Uh, so what are we looking at here? Um, well, it's inflation adjusted on a log scale in dollar. Uh, terms. You've got to decide for yourself what uh, what direction is this chart going. And it hasn't made a new high in terms of inflation adjusted. And I would say our video on this is almost better. I love what these guys have done. I'm not knocking them, but we just focused purely on the inflation adjustment of gold. Uh, go check that old video. Uh, BLS stats, John Williams stats. So we deflated by the government's own stats and we deflated by John Williams stats. And then we gave you the nominal gold price as it is now where supposedly it's at a new high. And it's actually not when you deflate by their stats and it's not even less. It's only just starting when you deflate by uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. OK, purchasing power of main currencies valued in gold down, 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 down. Generally, Swiss franc, the best of a bad lot. Um, but don't worry, that'll change. They're going to have to kill uh, their currency if while they're landlocked to the Eurozone. Um, accumulated ETF holdings by region. So which areas are holding? North America has a lot in the ETF. Europe has quite a bit in the ETF. Asia is there. Other. It would be interesting to know what the other is. It's probably rest of the world, all of them. Um, so a little bit of Canada, a little bit of South Africa, Indonesia, maybe. Um, and the actual gold price. What this is illustrating is that in actual fact, um, ETFs are probably growing faster even than the gold price. So people are playing catch up um, in their investment and it's moving quicker and that the gold price is very well underwritten. So that's done as a percentage of equities. Let's go to silver. Everyone's looking for gold. So I'll be the one collecting the silver. Um, silver is very, very good. Overall, also just under 10% average, so very close to gold and a much higher beta. So you're having more risk and more swings. So you can see more negative months and bigger negative months, but it got truncated. This was the truncated bill. And this is we've again, I prefer our chart on this as well. But I love what these guys have done. As I say, it's we, when it comes to the gold silver ratio analysis, I think ours is the best technically and chart. But this is, makes the point equally well um, about, you know, you went up to. 126 
on some measures. I took the gold futures and divided it by the silver futures and I got 126 uh, times. Um, they seem to be just shy of 120 there. So I'm not sure which uh, broker or supply source they're getting it. Maybe they're getting the London bullion market. I don't know. I used futures for the COMEX futures of gold and silver. Uh, and you went to an all-time high. And the thing that's interesting is when you go to an all-time high on the high side, you're going to have as much volatility and as much smash down on the downside. And I can say to you, in an exceedingly short time period, we literally called the top on that. That is one of the single biggest moves you've ever made on the gold-silver ratio. It's harder down, it's bigger, and it's in a shorter time than anything in the modern historical era. I mean, show me a bigger, steeper move by time than what you've just seen there. That is pretty epic as well. Close. This is still bigger and steeper. And it's only just begun. There's been a rally, a short rally. You're still going to be able to short in this green zone between the 58 and the 80 multiple. And uh, as I say, just that slap in the face is such a running fuck slap into next week. It's going to warn you big time that <laughs> there's more to come. You know, you're taking a beating and there's a whole bunch more hiding to come. That's my take anyway. Um, let's talk about silver inflation adjusted. Yep. So it's only just starting. That's off again. Government stats. We did this better. Um, it's, ba it's, it's barely started at all on John Williams' stats. It's flat as a pancake, just rounding and coming up. Silver S&P ratio. So much to be said. They're doing a lot of cross valuation. I like that. And silver QQ, that meant to be uh, NASDAQ, I believe, um, is, if I'm right, uh, is, is exceedingly low, exceedingly low. Also, just just starting. OK, um, the, the, the mining stocks. Well, I'm in uh, a couple. Wheaton, um, First Majestic, uh, great ones to look at. Uh, there are plenty others, um, you know, there's Endeavor, there's a variety of more. Um, the HUI index is getting going, but more to come. Um, good. I'm going to finish on that. Go have a look at uh, stocks uh, yourself. We, we cover a lot of individual stocks that are well set, not just in the precious metals markets for that matter, um, that are set up on hunt volatility funnels. We love to get the technical timing right with the macro fundamental. And that allows you to get into the right stocks at the right time with super high reward and tight risk. If you want to find out how to do that, book a call down below um, in the link. Just go to the website, choose a time, talk to another trader, investor, building wealth and reset times just like yourself. Um, let's skip over to something else that's a little bit interesting. Um, by the way, that website, uh, again, was um, in gold we trust report. IGWT. So I will um, post that in the show notes. And um, there was a couple of other things that were worthy of um, some interest. Everything bubble. You can see how the monetary inflation is just this this chart coming from there. You can see how it's just making higher highs. It's got a it's got such an increase of monetary base in it. It is just it's obscene. Um, this is the full uh, report. I don't want to get into too much of the minutia there. Uh, something I wanted to show you from Lynn Alden's uh, website. Check out lynnalden.com. Uh, great young lady, very smart, uh, tracks lots of interesting things. Um, totally affordable to be a member for your uh, small businesses, jobs. So this is your great communism hollowing out of the Burgoys and small businesses, small and medium sized businesses being absolutely mullered. This index is lower, lower than it has ever been, including the 09 lows. So employment by small businesses, no one is recruiting. OK, there was your beginning of COVID. By the way, you could see how we were turning down. This hasn't been a good period for SMEs at all. And the acceleration just got quicker and quicker. Here was our point when we had our uh, repo 2019 week rally and then smackdown. That whole period there is just brutal. The SME area is just not recruiting. They've been hollowed out and destroyed. How much are you thinking about bringing on new staff when you can't make a rent check? like a hole in the head. Uh, you're thinking, how do I cut down hours, rescale this business to one third of what it was so I can still live, uh, so I can still pay my overheads and occasionally get a little bit of petty cash to live on while I eat up all my savings. That's what's happening in 
that small business jobs section. Okay, so check the charts out. Um, now I did say something on gold and silver already, um, not so long ago, but I'm going to highlight this again. So we're going to just recap a couple of things. So busy charts. I had some guy in the comments say your charts are real messy. That's right, mate. I look at the charts. I'm drawing all the time and I'm seeing when key levels are being broken. I'm seeing when uh, grind lines are being broken and I'm alerted. Uh, guys with clean charts are guys that aren't charters. They're just guys that show pretty pictures. Um, so, you know, good luck. You want a chart reader, then it's going to be used. My 4x4 has mud on it. It doesn't go to the local private school and back. Okay, so that's how it goes. Um, falling wedge overall. Uh, what's the big black blue line? Yep, 1921. The high of the previous 2011 high. What's this line? The 2000 line. Big, big psychological level. We didn't spend too much time above it, all told. We had to run that mark. We ran it. There's one little tip of an iceberg, and that's the only other. So actually, uh, we didn't spend much time above 2000K. Yes, during that period, um, we did manage to get into the 70s. 27.5, I believe that is, um, on that high mark. So this is what's happened. You're in a falling wedge overall. We think you have broken it essentially there. But because of this lean angle that we have, let's just talk about that. I'm going to delete all the annotations and just drop you in a little bit tighter. We go to the two, two hour. Now that you see the wedge, we've kind of traded out of the wedge, but we haven't had a runaway break from the wedge. So let's discuss this in more detail. You can see here, this was a rally to the previous 2011 high. This was a rally to the 2011 high. This was a just run 2011 high. This is a just run. So you've got a very heavy legacy key level of significance. Yes, you've also broken it before in your highs, but this is still a significant level. Then you have your 1900 line, which is right over here. Let me just fatten him up as well. Maybe a bit more. Put him on a, a, a high carb, low protein diet. See how he does. There we go. So we sat here just clearing 1900 on the downside. So you're running 1890, 1890, 1890. So essentially, we've bled out of this falling wedge. Yes, we scraped through. We had a snapback. We've bled out of it for a while, but it's serving as short term resistance. It's just run, but short term knockback. There's been no follow through. So what in my uh, view is happening? Well, if the dollar continues to play ball, and weaken my overall impression is that we're going to squeeze here and break so the failure to make a new high is actually a good thing and the failure to make a new low is a good thing because that means volatility is actually calming so if you go to indicators historical volatility that should be reducing i don't need two of them thanks bud we'll take the one with the dark blue line you can see that it's overall reducing it's overall reducing from the highs across here. So we are squeezing along, squeezing along, squeezing along. So assuming the dollar doesn't have a sudden spurt of immense strength, which would be a little bit left field could happen with the election coming. Maybe people get afraid of the outcome and they buy dollars. Not sure. We're waiting on stimulus and all sorts of things to come out of there. So I think we are holding these 1890. So you're stuck on a handle somewhere between 1890. Here's the 1890 mark, which is just ten dollars below the 1900. So if you if I just allow me to use the same line for a second, you're at around 1890, ten dollars below. There she goes. And you're squeezing between that line and the legacy high. Uh, and I suggest to you that it's going to resolve to the upside on balance of probabilities, which is great. It'll be great news. What about the gold silver ratio? We had, well, you saw it and we said we've got such a cool gold silver ratio draw. Well, we do on the big time frames, um, but I'm going to spare you that because I've covered it in so many uh, uh, draws. You know that history. So it's more about what's it going to do now. Of course, everything weakens. So the gold silver ratio strengthened at that period. Then we staircase down, staircase down rally staircase down now you are currently having <coughs> during the squeeze a little bit of the gold being stronger than the silver uh, but it's not overwhelmingly strong um, and once again i would suggest to you that we are leaning leaning towards a break of this red line at some point and returning back down to here however however how do we be wrong on that well it's possible 
it is indeed possible. But if we fail to make a new high and we come back down to this line, as I'd anticipate, that would be very, very bullish. Typically, you often get continuation patterns failing to make a new low, failing to make a new high, squeezing. So everything here is showing you there's a squeeze. If we're wrong, we're going to be 180 degrees wrong. We're not going to be, oh, nothing happens, we're partially wrong. We're going to be 180 degrees wrong. That means dollar up, fear and loathing, gold and silver down, probably Bitcoin down has a pullback as well. So, you know, that's that could happen. It could, could happen. I'm not going to undervalue uh, it, um, but overall, it would suggest to me that we are probably going to revisit this red line and then grind along it for a while before having a down leg. Let's have a look at silver and the dollar to finish this uh, little uh, vid and excursion that we made. How's the dollar done since we last uh, saw you? Well, I suggested that it might m make a right fractalized shoulder. Hasn't changed too much. Little bit up today. It's had another little visit uh, since to the downside. I'm not sure if it had, that had happened last time I saw you. I think that's a little visit there, which shows that there is uh, it really leaning on the 92.7. Currently trading up. It needs to take that high. Use your alerts to see if that's about to happen on the Dixie index. It could go higher and still be a right shoulder. It could go all the way up to here. The last two uh, touches of the previous shoulder on this fractal, it's not a perfect head and shoulder, on this fractal went through the blue line. So, I mean, technically it could still be a shoulder up here. Just not seeing it being a big, powerful shoulder personally. Uh, and I prefer, I prefer weak shoulders, which kind of indicates that there's a degree of exhaustion coming in. Um, but overall, I would say it's moved up, it's moved down. It seems to be in a range trade. Uh, only if it takes out this range will I start to say, well, it could be heavy for our metals, could be a little bit tricky for our metals. Um, and we can't, we've always said there's a possibility of a fear moment on the COVID, the whole COVID narrative. Um, could be anything, could be anything. I've even suggested in one possible prediction that Hunter Biden commits suicide to create sympathy for Joe and there he can stand down, doesn't need to do any campaigning, couple of photo ops looking all stoic and sad. Uh, and he gets a sympathy vote to try to keep him in the race. Uh, I think Trump wins it, but only just uh, to great loathing and screams and cries of foul. But that's a guess. I truly don't know. Um, and your guess will be as good as mine. Uh, the communists come after the Republicans have messed up. They like the white male conservatives to have cocked up. Happened on both Bushes uh, with Clinton and then on Obama after W. So I expect they're going to stick to formula. You know, Democrats, the communists, the bigger, more leftists always seem to fix things, um, which is an ironic framing. But anyway, uh, I don't have a dog in that fight. I'm truly not pro Dem or Republican. Um, I suggest to you, you don't engage. But that's my suggestion only. So silver, what about silver? We haven't looked at silver. So there was a risk reward trade that I'd suggested you could potentially uh, get it was around 4.7 and you would have been triggered and entered on one of the, the long if you'd got in and you would be standing on your stop, which is down here um, and you would be leaning on legacy support that has formed that I think this is probably not going to run through. Remember, this one just ran through it and there's two layers to it. Uh, so it's pretty strong uh, support. So it's going kind of quiet and dull. Look at this historical vol uh, for silver. Let me just move that over. You know, you just have a look at this from up there. Look how steep it is and how far it's come down. That was a nasty old look at that slap in the face over here. See what that did for you on a volatility level. That was the volatility expansion bearish. When you came down there, you're having another leg down and this is very, very low and just starting to drift up. Whenever you change direction and you cease to go down, you get a little bit of volatility because it's a little bit of this way and then a little bit of that. That is the wobbling around. But once it goes really quiet and doesn't go up too much and just drifts and goes slightly up, um, it goes to sleep. This it goes to sleep. And I think you will go to sleep and I think we'll get a impulsive reaction. Um, as I said, you could get a final dip down to shake out weekends before later going up. So overall, we're bullish. But overall, how would I look at this? At the moment, I think it's pretty good 
for a little upside uh, continuation move. So that's the update on gold and silver. We will also be updating you on crypto over time. By the way, we've got an amazing interview with Jack Schwager coming out. The market author of the market was this. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. And you've got to go to the bell and hit always. YouTube is unsubscribing people if they haven't hit the always button on the notifications. Go to notifications, not sometimes or discretionary. Always notify me. Click the always button and then you will always be told. The AI won't decide if you get to see these kind of clips. Okay, that's a take on metals. Um, overall, dollar looking a bit soft, um, not too excited. And gold tightening, silver tightening, a big move may be coming afoot. Enjoy the Jack Schwager interview uh, that will come out later on today. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget the merch below as well. If you want a nice market sniper, coffee mug, such a salesman.